when we started, I said that we will be sharing uh, Dr. Burnett's bio each day in bits and pieces. So today I'm going to continue with it and let you know that in January 2017 and February 2017, she was installed at Triumphant Tabernacle Mission and New Dimension Church, respectively. She served both churches tirelessly until December 2017, when another pastor was assigned to the Triumphant Tabernacle Mission. However, she continues to serve the New Dimension Church with great passion. And I believe that because I have seen her passion in serving the Lord by just watching some of her videos on YouTube. Welcome to you, Pastor Donette. The floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Again, I want to thank our lovely host for the wonderful work she has been doing these past few um, mornings. And uh, praise God for those of you who have joined with us, or um, whether you are a member of a church, you're a guest, you are a uh, departmental leader, you are an administrator or one of our pastors, uh, but whichever um, area you fall into, it is just great to have you this morning uh, praying together. So good morning to all of you, and thank you again for the privilege um, just to share with you um, on this uh, morning, which is your Tuesday morning and my Monday night. Um, but praise God, we are together. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Now I just invite your presence and your power. Have your way. Anoint to me, O oh God, and just allow your will to be accomplished. Speak to your people. Draw us closer to you and exalt your name, I pray for Christ's sake. Amen. All right. So the last few nights we've been talking about um, Isaiah. We've been in Isaiah chapter 53. I want to switch a little bit uh, tonight, but somehow just going back on the fact that um, Christ came, was wounded for us, died and was uh, 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 broken that we might, you know, receive the life that he deserved with his stripes. We have been healed from the power of sin. Christ provide healing. He provided that healing healing for us, that we might be healed. And to this evening, as I began, let me share a story that I read some time ago in the magazine Christianity Today. And this story really captured my attention. It, 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 it was told, the story was told by a native missionary. And it's in regards to a young woman living in India. Um, her name, Aaliyah. Um, this missionary noticed that this young woman, as she stood on the beach, she was holding a tiny infant close to her heart. He noticed that she was crying uh, as she began to slowly walk towards the waters or the river's edge. Uh, she stepped into the water silently making her way out until she was waist deep and the water began to gently lap at the sleeping baby's feet, the baby she had in her arms. She stood there for a while, holding the child tightly as she stared out across the river. Then all of a sudden, in one quick movement, she threw the six month old baby to his watery death. The missionary watched as she walked out of the river, knelt in the sand, crying uncontrollably while beating her chest. So he went over and knelt down next to her and asked her what happened. And through tears, she told him, the problems in my home are too many and my sins are heavy on my heart. So I offered the best I have, my firstborn son, to the goddess Ganges. So this young woman, tormented by the problems and the pain and the suffering within her home, 
within our life. Feeling the smothering weight of hopelessness, despair, and sin. Sinking deeper and deeper every day under her burdens. She felt that God must be punishing her, must be testing her rather, to see what she will do to merit their help. And so in the darkness of her counsel, she believed that the best she could do to receive the favor of the gods was to kill her own child. Hey. What a pity. Hmm. What a sense of despair. What hopelessness. Yeah. And she's not alone because our world is filled with so many people today who think that they must do something for God to save them. They must give God a reason for God to deliver them from sin, for God to love them, for God to accept them, for God to forgive them. But it is Isaiah that tells us that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement that brings us peace rested on him. And with the wounds he suffered, we have been healed. Healing comes to us through the suffering, the suffering of Jesus Christ. And so I want us to know, I don't know what you may be going through. I don't know what the challenges may be that you have been facing as you've been praying and you've been struggling and talking with God and seeking God's intervention. I want us to know this morning that God loves, accepts, and forgives all of us, as long as we cast ourselves on him, we don't have to give God something for God to bless us. All we need to do is to surrender our lives to him and said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And God indeed will come close to us. He will love and accept, forgive anyone, no matter how miserable, rotten, and without merit we may be. The love of God has power to reach us wherever we are in whatever situation we might find ourselves in. Amen. Romans chapter 5, 8 declares that God demonstrates his own love to us. <laughs> he demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, who Christ died. Amen. Christ did not die when we started to obey him. Christ did not die because we said, Lord, we need your help to save us. No, we were yet sinners. We were at war with him. We were at enmity with God. We wanted nothing, zero, zip, nada to do with him. And Christ, in the moment when we were at full enmity with him, the Bible said he demonstrated his love and died on a cross for us. He was wounded for us. You see, if Christ had died only for good people, all of us, like Aaliyah, would indeed be hopeless. Every one of us. If it was just for good people, it was, if it was for people who gave God a reason to love them, <laughs> all of us would be doomed and cast down. But praise be to God tonight, or to this morning rather, Jesus died for all, no matter how messed up we are. Jesus didn't die for the honorable, for the upright, for the good, for the obedient. He died for the ungodly. He died for the sinners. He died for those who were at enmity with God. God loved us while we were still hopelessly enmeshed in our sin. And not only does he love us, he not only loved, but the Bible tells us that he manifested that love by sending Jesus to die for us. He demonstrated that love. It is one thing to tell somebody you love them. It's another to demonstrate that love. And Jesus didn't just demonstrate by giving us something. He gave himself. As one writer said, God emptied all of heaven in Christ. Amen. When he sent him into a world, he gave everything. 
in order to save us. He manifested his love. He demonstrated his love. He gave us proof of his love by sending Jesus to die for us. The most overwhelming truth of the gospel is that God loves a sinful, fallen, rebellious mankind. That's what we ought to get from this. God loves us. That's the essence of the gospel. God loves a sinful, fallen, rebellious mankind so much that while we were at war with him, while we were still sinners, he gave this uh, uh, only begotten son completely gave that whosoever the Bible said believes in him him, should not perish, but have everlasting life, should not remain in a state of condemnation, but be lifted up into life eternal, should not remain in a state of misery and pain and despair and hopelessness and darkness, but will be lifted up in the midst of light and hope and, and, and joy and peace. That's why Ephesians chapter 2 eight tells us, for by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Hallelujah, somebody. It is by grace, something we deserve not. Grace, the unmerited favor of God. We didn't deserve it. We deserve to be killed. We deserve to suffer and die. But the grace of God found us in our mess and lifted us up. And praise be to God tonight or to this morning, we can say to God with the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. For by grace, we are saved, not of ourselves, but as a gift of God. You see, when Paul wrote this, I can only imagine that what Christ did for us was so amazing to Paul, so startling, that all Paul could do is just simple calls it grace. By grace, you are saved. Mm -hmm. It's all grace. God's astonishing kindness, God's indescribable salvation, God's undeserved favor is simply grace. Grace, the action of a caring God who stoops down to lift us up, not because we loved him, not because we are good, not because we are worthy, but simply because of his great love. By grace, the Bible says, we are saved through faith. In other words, we've got to believe. We don't have to see it. We don't have to feel it. We just need to believe that God did this thing for us. And in spite of our foolishness and in spite of our brokenness and in spite of our wandering, we can reach out to God this morning and say, Lord, have mercy on me. And in his grace, he will reach down to you and he will lift you up out of your state of despair. God is able by his stripes, hmm. we have been healed. Amen. So every act of God, every act, everything God does for humanity, every act of God is an act of grace. Hmm. I'm going to tell you this. I don't know, maybe some of you have seen it, maybe not, I don't know, but some years ago, many few years back, there was this movie called um, the, the Passion of the Christ. And the writer of this uh, movie used, in that movie, used two scenes, uh, scenes to paint an incredible picture of grace. To me, that's what I thought it was, just an incredible picture of grace. You know, the first scene um, started in the one courtyard, the courtyard where Jesus was being crucified. He was being whipped and, 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 and the blood was flowing. Uh, and, and there in that courtyard, as Jesus was being whipped and as the blood dripped down uh, from his, his torn flesh, uh, uh, we see Mary Magdalene stooping down to wipe his blood off the stones. That's the movie. The movie was just painting that picture. And, and, and as Mary uh, crawls on uh, um, hands and feet, she's crying, she's weeping. And in that moment, the scene shifted to another scene. And, and the second scene actually shows Mary, it's like a flashback Mary's having. And, and she goes back to the scene where we see her on her knees in another courtyard, dusty courtyard, where she was accused of adultery, a courtyard where an angry group or crowd of Pharisees stood ready to stone her. The scene shows Jesus writing in the sand and the crowd slowly dropping their 
stones. And as Jesus stands, we see Mary Magdalene's hand reach towards Jesus' feet. And from where she lies on the ground, she's on the ground. They throw her there without pity, without mercy. They condemned her and she was ready to be stoned to death. But Jesus somehow began to write in the sand. And as Jesus wrote, those who were accusing her slowly left one by one, dropped their stone and moved away. And so as she recognized that it was just her and Jesus, she slowly comes to, to her knees. And Jesus, as she comes to her knees, Jesus graciously reaches down and pulls her up. Hallelujah. Even though her face is bruised and battered from the rough treatment at the hands of those who condemned her, Jesus' warm eyes are locked onto hers. She understands that Jesus is offering grace, unmerited favor. And then right there and then in the movie, the scene switches back to Mary in the stone courtyard with tears streaming down her face as she wipes up the blood that dripped from the back of Jesus. She realized in that moment that she was hopelessly doomed had it not been for grace, had it not been for grace. Can I tell somebody this morning that had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for that old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul will be lost. Forever we all will be doomed and lost. Romans chapter 5, 20 tells us, blessed be the name of God, that because of grace, where sin abound, grace much more abounds. Hallelujah. One writer says, where grace abound, where, where sin abound, grace overflow. I hear the songwriter says, in holy pages, this truth can be found, a promise to stand on when darkness abounds. Right never loses and wrong never wins. And mm -hmm. grace will always be greater than mm -hmm. sin. Grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary has proven it time and again, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, God's grace will always be greater than sin. Broken and bruised from the choices, yes, that we have made. Sin has a price and so often we paid, but oh, Jesus is waiting. New hope is in him and grace will always be greater than sin. Grace, grace. Mm -hmm. God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. So whatever you have done this morning, wherever you have wandered away, for the Bible did tell us that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We've all wandered away. We've moved away from the place that we have been. But praise be to God, the Bible says the good shepherd, Jesus Christ himself, came and gave himself. He died to the death we deserve and offered us grace, unmerited favor, which we did not deserve. We deserve justice and justice demanded that we die for the sins that we committed. But hallelujah, this morning, the Bible tells us, oh, by grace, Amen. we have been saved, hallelujah. not of ourselves, but a gift of God. It's a gift. We don't deserve it. We did nothing for it. We can't achieve it. We can't reason out ourselves for it. It is a gift, God's unmerited favor. And so I would just want us to know, no matter where you are, no matter what you have done, no matter how far you have sunk, remember tonight, this morning, that grace will always be greater than your sin, than your backsliding. Grace, grace, mm. God's grace, mm. Mm. good grace, grace that will mm. pardon 
and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God, mm. grace. Grace that is forever greater than all our sin. May mm. God help us to remember he was wounded for mm. us, bruised for us, punished for our peace. And with all of that, by the mm. wounds that he suffered, the bruise that he endured, and the chastisement that was upon him, yeah, we are healed. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't know who you are this morning. I don't know the state of your relationship with him. I don't know if you've wandered away. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you've never accepted him. But maybe tonight, this morning, you want to say, God, I want a closer walk with you. I want to surrender my life to you. I want to give myself. Put it in the chat. Reach out to someone. They will find you. They'll reach out to you. And someone will help you to come to know Jesus. This is what it's about. Nothing else. We are here to make it into the kingdom. And the only way you can make it into the kingdom is to accept the grace of God, Father in heaven, for that person who may be writing in the chat right now, for that person who needs to make a decision, may you move upon their hearts, may you move God in a mighty way, loose the shackles that bind them, dear God. Whatever it is, Jesus, that tied them in sin, whether it's a relationship or whether it is, uh, you know, the things that we kind of bind ourselves to, we come against it and pray that you'll sabotage every plan of the enemy and every weapon formed against your people to keep your people in sin we come against it by the blood of the lamb of god and we pray that you lift up a mighty standard against the host of darkness deliver your people rescue your people jesus somebody needs to be saved this morning have your way in jesus name i pray amen god bless you